Today we're going to talk about optimizing UV layouts when you export from your modeling software to go into something like Adobe Substance Painter or another texturing or rendering software. We're looking at a pattern right now for a genes in Gerber Technologies Acumark. We've simulated and I'm going to export. More recent versions of Acumark 3D give you an option of exporting to multiple UV tiles or a single one. And currently, I don't like the multiple tiles because they export in rectangles the shape of the pattern pieces, and Substance doesn't like anything other than squares, so it ends up stretching things out. If you want to work in Substance, you're going to do some optimization anyway, so you may as well just export to a single tile. So I would go to, once I've simulated, Export Simulation. So when you export from Acumark, it's going to give you a zip file. You need to unzip it first. There will be, at minimum, an OBJ file, which is your 3D object simulation. The MTL is the material file, and this needs to be in the same location as the OBJ, because the next software is going to read it. In this case, it saved this PNG is the layout of my fabrics, and you don't see the entire tile because it's black, but it's crammed all these pieces into sort of one side of the tile, and the layout is not great. If your pieces don't take up enough space on the tile, the resolution in substance is not going to be great. So what you want to do is take these and stretch them out onto individual tiles, and we'll, we'll look at how to do that next. So first I just need to extract them. This is Blender. It's a free program, and while we often think of things that are free, must be cheap or crappy or something, it's actually a fantastic piece of software, and I really encourage you to go out, download it, learn it if you haven't already. Once you've downloaded it, you open it, the first thing you're going to see in Blender is this cube in the camera. We don't want those, so we're going to hit the hotkey A to select all, and then X to delete. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to import that OBJ file that we had exported from Acumark, or whatever software. So. Here we see the OBJ and the MTL. You don't need to do anything with the MTL file, just the OBJ. So I would hit Import OBJ. We can see that there's some, some collision and some, some mesh things happening, and that happens because we've exported an extruded mesh. So it has all the thickness of the material from the simulation. And that's the easiest way to do it once the simulation is done in Gerber, but um, it's not necessarily the cleanest, so I prefer to export my simulation before the simulation is done. Let's say you've gone to 100 frames and you're simulating and you're at 75, so it's pretty much done. Run the simulation then, because what you get then is a non-extruded mesh. That's a subject of another tutorial, but just wanted to point it out. So in order to play with the UV maps in Blender, I'm going to select this by clicking on it and hit tab to go into edit mode. Up in the top left corner, you have this drop down to go between object mode and object mode just selects the object where you're, you're selecting different objects. In this case, I only have one. If I had multiple, it's how I would select the object I wanted. And then once it's selected, I can either use the drop down to go in edit mode or I can just hit tab and it will do the same thing. And we see that my mesh lights up all in orange because it's all selected. If it weren't, that's what you're probably going to see. Uh, either way, it doesn't matter. Then we want to go into the UV editor. So up in this corner of the screen, and you got to be careful. Wait till your, your cursor turns into that little cross, and then drag it across, and that opens up another window. Up above the edit mode drop down is another drop down that has what looks like maybe train tracks. I don't know. You're going to go there and open the UV editor. And we see that these are those chunks that Gerber had exported, and they're all crammed into this one little corner. And not only is this op layout not super optimized, but uh, most programs now support what's known as a UDIM workflow. Previously, you had to cram all of your UV chunks or pattern pieces into one tile, so the resolution really wasn't great. Um, and now a lot of them support what's known as the UDIM workflow, where you can spread across multiple tiles. So just to see what's going on, if I go back, click in my viewport window and hit A for all, which will select all the vertices, you'll see how the pieces are laid out and what I mean about these rectangles of the texture that Substance doesn't like. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of that. So 
this little bar has the information about which image is being used. So that's the image that was exported from Accumark and that you saw it was a little PNG file in that folder. And we're just going to go over here and click on the X, which is going to remove the link to that image. So now we have no image or texture information. And then what we want to do is we want to scale everything up. Now the rules of UV mapping is you can't cross over the lines over for the borders and you can't have overlapping chunks. Well, if we scale this up, and to do so, I would select it all and then hit S for scale and just drag until it looks like it might be right. And then hit the key G, which is grab, which should be M for move. <laughs> well, it's not, it's grab. And then you can drag the pieces over. And I've made them just a little bit too big. So hit S again to scale them down, down, Jeffrey. There, that should be all right. But now we have all these pieces floating off in the netherworld. And let's just make some more space for ourselves. So how are we going to fix that? While I'm in the UV editor window, if I hit N, there's this little flyout on the side. And if I go to view, we've got a UDIM grid. So grid shape 1-1. One, one. So UDIM works in rows and columns. Um, we want probably three tiles across. So I will click to three and we can start laying things out. It's much easier to do texturing in other programs if your pieces are lined out or lined up in a logical sense in terms of the layout, how they would sew. Obviously when you're sewing these together, this part is upside down. To the back. So how we're going to do this is that, so if I just start grabbing things, I'm going to grab vertices and that can deform my piece and we don't want that. So how do I get just the piece I want and not some extra things on another piece? Well, I got lucky just there, maybe, but so the hotkey would be L. So when I hover over a piece and hit L, it's going to grab all the vertices and edges that are linked to that piece. So in this case, I'm going to rotate both my fronts so I can hover over the other front as well and hit L. And then here's another hotkey for you, R, which is rotate. So I'm going to hit R and then on the number pad, not at the top of your keyboard, but on the number pad of the side of it, if you're on a laptop and you don't have a number pad, you're going to have some issues. Um, anyways, R 180 means rotate 180 degrees. And that's moving my front. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit G for grab. Where'd they go? Let's try that again. Oh, so you hit R180, and it rotates 180, and then enter to accept. I'm going to scooch them over, so I'm going to hit G for grab and move them over. Don't go over the lines. And then there's some other pieces here that are turned around, so I'm going to go and start turning pieces logically. First, deselect the fronts. So this piece, this watch pocket is upside down. This is upside down. This is upside down. This, this, this. And then R180, enter. So I'm going to deselect. And so again, you know, if I was trying to select this without the L key, I'd have trouble with this. I'm just going to hover over, hit L, and then G to grab and bring it over. Let's stay in this square and then L, G, bring it over. I'm going to move my waistband over now, L, G, oh, I've got two of them, cool. Well, maybe not. Move the fly, L, G, oh, see? I've got this little vertex selected, so if I were to start moving, it's going to pull it out. So you got to be careful about not having phantom vertices. Sometimes you just have to click around until you deselect it. L, G. I'm going to grab the, the yoke pieces. L, G. Oh, there's four of them. Another thing, you don't want your pieces overlapping each other, so this is actually a good thing that we're doing this. So L, G. 
I'm going to assume I'm going to have two yoke pieces over here overlapping each other. L, G, yep. L, G. Huh. Oh, that must be belt loops. So I'm going to hit L a few times. Grab them, bring them over. Let's make some room for the pants, for the backs. And maybe put this piece over here. And see, this is the dividing line, so we want to make sure to grab both backs, bring them over, lay them down inside the UV tile, and there we have a UDIM layout. I can now export my model, export OBJ. Even though we did it from Gerber, we've got to redo it because we've got a new UDIM layout. So I had a folder UV editor layout. I'm going to save it in the same place, but call it, in this case, it was IACDE denim UDIM. So here we are in Substance Painter, ready to start texturing, and here's our UDIM layout. And this is why we redid that whole uh, business of changing the pieces, because instead of having our, all of our pieces crammed into one tiny tile, that would get terrible resolution, we have them spread out. So a resolution is better, and it's far easier to work with the space. But we see that this extruded mesh is a little bit crazy, because clearly the fabric thickness was totally wrong. Um, causing some some collision issues so if you're into it we'll go back and I will show you a much more advanced export option and how to take it into blender and create thickness that's much more easy to model so if you're up for some challenge join me in the next tutorial